No opening comments, so fire away with questions. Get one minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> Good to see y'all. Everybody good? Good. Well, Kirby, what about it? What, 14, 15, 16 guys, NFL's looking at just your thoughts on having this kind of collection of talent and NFL personnel? Yeah, I wish they had some coming back. So I wish they could uh, come back and play for us again, but unfortunately they can't. So I'm excited for them today. Uh, we broke our own personal record of 122 NFL personnel here today. Got about five or six head coaches, um, more than we've ever had. So luckily we have a new team meeting room that we're able to house these guys in. They've been very complimentary of our kids, uh, the leadership of our players, um, the knowledge. I know several head coaches were here last night and sat down and watched tape with our players and went through each one by one. Really impressed with their football knowledge. Um, but they're great people too, so I'm excited for these guys. A couple guys that hadn't got to work out yet, get to. Uh, Fitz is here today, he's not able to work out, but he didn't get to go to the combine, Julian, obviously. and. Um, Excited for these guys. And following up on Fitz, a guy that played hurt this year. What did that say about Fitz that he made that sacrifice for the team? Yeah, he's he's a guy that probably needed surgery about halfway through the year. He chose not to have that surgery. He wanted to play out the year. He did that. He did a really good job for us. Uh, the good news is he'll be healthy for all the mini camps and all the OTA days wherever he gets to go. But he's bulked up some. I think he's jumping 265. Um, they want him to be able to play Y, so he's added some weight and. Uh, he hopefully will get to work out uh, maybe in April for some teams uh, later on when he's healthy. Coach, talk about the fact that this happens when you do what you've done the past two years and the fact that this is one of the spoils of, of accomplishing what you've accomplished. Well, the credit goes to these kids. You know, they, they made the decision to come to school here. Our job is to develop them and make sure they're better people when they leave. And I think each one of these kids would tell you they, they, they're more successful because the work ethic they were able to achieve here. And uh, we had some really good coaches to help coach them up and some really good players help play and I think it's very unique to have this kind of collection of talent you don't have that every year it's not every year you're gonna have 14 guys at the combine it's just tough to do and uh, I'm proud of this group though is there a reason why Nakobe didn't run here today do you know much about that he has a, a pec strain so he was getting ready for the combine and he was doing a lot of bench press and he strained his pec so uh, he hasn't been able to train as much he's gonna do some position drills and things but that's the decision that he has to make and uh, I think he's made the best decision well, I think if you look up there, a lot of our kids like to uh, try to miss class today to watch all this. And that's <laughs> always a concern of mine is uh, we, we tell them today is probably the most important day you go to class. And when you get out, you can go cheer for your, your, your brothers and, and cheer those guys on. But we've all been there before. I was a player. You wanted to watch all those guys ahead of you. You aspire to do what they're doing. And uh, it's an exciting day for them. I'm just very thankful we've got this facility to hold it in because had it been eight, nine, ten years ago, you know, we'd be outside in this weather and that would be unfortunate for these kids. From a recruiting standpoint, how much does this put publicity here with all the teams and the success you guys had at Combine mean for you? Uh, it depends on how much kids watch it, right? So uh, one thing I've learned is you think that all these kids watch it and you bring a recruit in and he's like, well, I spend most of my time on social media looking at other recruits. You know, so we want to we wanna push what these guys have done out, what they've been able to achieve, the, the amount of NFL personnel in here. We want that out there because we want kids to see that. You know, we're one of the few schools in the country that we're open to the NFL teams whenever they can come. We want them to be here to watch our players. And uh, a lot of coaches don't like doing that. They're not comfortable with that. But for us, we want our players to get seen, get evaluated, and be able to put their best out there. And I think that's helped these guys be comfortable in front of NFL personnel because it's not the first day they've done it. When you talk to these NFL personnel, I mean, is there one, I guess, overarching characteristic that they see in all of your guys? I don't know. I think every guy's different. I think there's been a lot of uh, accolades given to this group, especially defensively and even the, you know, the two backs. The biggest thing that sticks out is the way they play on tape. You know, they pops on tape. They play really hard. They play really physical. They know they're coming from a, a very structured environment where they have to be on time, attentive, work hard. It's not easy. And when the kids tell them it's not easy, I think these NFL personnel like that because they want it to be tough. I think a lot of the guys at the combine said meetings are run like the NFL, practices run like the NFL. Like it's one, how much of a conscious effort is that? Two, how much do you think it prepares them for days like today and in the, in their future? In the I don't think any coach that's a head coach in college football would say that it's not that way at their place. You know, nobody's going to say that it's not that way. We try to mimic ours off what's best for us. And what we did last year might not be best for us this year, but our kids do uh, have a standard they have to execute to. And there's a discipline still within the program where you, you better dress the right way, you better behave the right way, you better do the right things in order to be successful. And we think the off-field discipline helps us have discipline on the field. And we, we try to sell that to these guys. How important is NFL draft success to you know, keeping the program successful? 
It helps. I mean, certainly, right? You're going to sell the next Jordan Davis on Jordan Davis. You're going to sell the next George Pickens on George Pickens. So that helps sell it. But uh, ultimately, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of organization. Coach, can you talk about Jordan Davis and some of the changes he's been making as he gets ready for the league? Changes? Like with his weight. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to SEC media days, Jordan weighed 330. So it's not like there's major changes there. He played throughout the season probably in the 350 range. He played the national championship game around 340. He was somewhere in 340, 345. So I think a lot's been made about that. But when he maintained his weight, he was at the weight he's at now. Uh, and he has had some fluctuations in there. But he also came in 315 pounds. He was going to put on weight muscle when he got here. And he did that. And he's done a good job managing that. Kirby, how much do you think Nakobe's, uh, you know, work ethic and example kind of rubbed off the other guys in the inside linebacker room? Well, he's a year younger than them, so you know, all those guys were here a year before him. I certainly think his character and competitiveness, all of them to get on the field in that room, you had to be on it, and it raised the standard. It raises the bar. It's, it's kind of what we're missing now. We don't have this depth where guys are having to compete. Some guys have just inherited jobs. In that linebacker room, you didn't inherit anything. You had to work. I mean, Monty said a lot of that for all those guys. He set a standard of excellence in workout. Monty learned it from Roquan. So it gets passed down all the way through. How important is it to see Julian Rochester work out in his sixth year? And just what does that tell the younger guys, you know, never give up, not, you know? Yeah, I'm just happy for Julian to be healthy. You know, he's worked really hard to be healthy. He's had a couple ACLs. I mean, he's a kid who's been through a lot here, but he's never wavered. He's a great leader for us last year. He's a leader in the locker room. He helped shape Jordan and uh, Devontae's work ethic, so I'm happy for him today. Do you believe Jordan can be a three-down lineman? Absolutely. He could, be, he could have been a three-down player here. Um, it's more about conditioning, and when he's at his top-level conditioning and his best weight, he can play on third down. We've got pass rush ability out of the guy. We didn't ask him to do that because we, like, we had the luxury of a Jalen Carter and a Devontae Wyatt and a Trevon to go in there and do it. But he did it for us in practice all the time. Is that something, like you said, his weight? I mean, what do you feel like the weight is for him that he can be that three down? It depends on how teams are using him. You know, if they're going to use him for every down pass rush and things, he's probably going to need to stay between 325, 335. If he's not going to be that guy, he's going to be a stop the run guy so you can put faster guys on the field, then he probably needs to be 345, 355. But their team, the teams will make that decision. What about the jump for Devontae Wyatt into the first round? We're hearing now first round projection. Is that? Did you see that before your eyes from last season to this season? He's had that talent. You know, I think uh, we're all – optimistic for Devontae. He's a, he's a great kid. So he's homegrown from Atlanta. Uh, I think Trey Scott's done it. Nobody gives Trey Scott enough credit for the work he's done, not only with all of them, but really Devontae, because Devontae has come the furthest from a natural stat, uh, talent standpoint. I mean, this guy decided to stay an extra year, you know, and he didn't have to do that. And it's paid off for him in terms of maturity and moving up the draft board. Trayvon Walker is obviously a workout freak, but we look at the DN numbers here. They don't always translate to sacks, and yet it's an important position. Can you explain what that DN does, why that's such a hard and special position? In well, it's what they ask you to do a lot of times, right? I mean, he didn't just line up and rush on the edge. There's several NFL scouts that say, hey, you just line him up and outside backer and let him set an edge. He's going to be tremendous at that. He's really strong. He's really fast. Um, but that's not what we ask him to do. We ask him to do a lot of different things. And his value comes, like you said, in workouts. He's a freak. He's got great length. He's an incredible athlete, and he's going to be a high draft. What did George Pickens have to do to have the combine that he did? Surprise people with his speed and kind of doubting how well, he trained. He trained hard. You got to remember, George has kind of been training for this all year because he wasn't with us for most of the year. He was rehabbing his uh, a knee and doing a lot of sprints. Well, that, that correlates with running in 40. And we were happy to get him back when we did. He helped us, but he also helped himself because he was able to get on the field and get some tape. Last question. George's defensive line and set linebackers are well represented. A lot of continuity. I think that helps. I think the same thing at linebacker with Coach Schumann. You know, that stuff helps. We're going through some transition now. But when you hire good coaches that want to teach, that happens pretty quick. Thanks.